Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Between the Notes. Last week we premiered this, uh, it's where I talk about music, uh, at this point my music, different compositions that are meaningful or interesting that I think you might find uh, the same. Last week was Prayer of the Children. We started off with that one and I got a lot of positive comments, so thank you for that. Um, as you watch these episodes, let me know if there's something you want to see, a song you want to hear, maybe something you want me to do differently. Um, I welcome all comments, critiques, and criticism. Anyway, this week we're going to do something different. We're going to not talk about just the music between the notes, but we're going to talk about a video that goes with the music because it was such a fascinating video. I'm talking about the song Baroque Coco. That's a song off of my album, Outside the Lines, which uh, sadly was my last album that I released. Um, you know, they don't, the CDs don't sell anymore, and uh, it's a little pricey to do, uh, to do songs. So uh, not that I'm not going to record more, but at this point, you know, just have to figure out a what, how to make it worthwhile. So my last album was 2014. To accompany that album, we thought, let's do a video. So I talked to uh, my good friend and talented uh, director, producer, uh, John David Brewer, asked him if he would be involved with me, and he said, absolutely, would love to. He's always wanted to do music videos, and he's done some, but he wanted to do something where he really could create. So together, we watched hundreds of music videos, seeing the things that we liked and didn't like. Up to that point, piano players especially would do a thing where they'd take a piano, stick it out in a field or on top of a mountain, record the beautiful song, and that was pretty much it. And, and while they were lovely, I just didn't want to do the same old thing, and neither did John David. So we saw a video um, by a group called Pomplamoose. They're very popular, and they're very popular online, and they do videos all the time. Early on, they would do very creative videos. Lately, they've been doing nice videos, but they're just pretty much a video in the studio with everybody singing. But in the early days, they would come up with some very interesting concepts. And one of the concepts they came up with was using a method called projection mapping. And um, when I saw how they did this, which is basically they would take shapes like uh, like a little box or, or a triangle, maybe made out of uh, just poster paper or um, styrofoam, something like that. And they would set it on, uh, you know, a table, then they would take a projector and project an image, a movie that would project onto that image, and it would suddenly, this image would change into uh, the, the girl's face that sings for Pomplamoose or something else. If you saw the uh, Queen of England's uh, Silver Jubilee, uh, Diamond Jubilee, actually, sorry, uh, Elizabeth, it's the Diamond Jubilee, um, you'll, they took the entire side of Buckingham Palace and projected images, and it was really cool how they changed the whole way that Buckingham Palace looked like. That's what they call project, projection mapping. And John David and I decided we wanted to do that. So I had the idea of um, taking a Picasso painting, one that I always liked. I always liked the, those cubist images that Picasso painted. He painted a few of them. He's most known for like the Three Musicians was the name, where he would take, I think it was a guitarist and maybe a trumpet player, but um, I'll, I'll find the image and post it here. Anyway, you can see when you look at it that, that it has that really contemporized cubist approach that Picasso was known for during the early 20s and uh, 30s. And I, I wanted to do that, but I wanted to do it with my musicians. How to turn my musicians into Picasso inspired images. Well, first of all, I kind of went and I, I took shapes, triangle, square, rectangles, and so forth, put them on a page, and then cut out images to where you can see a drummer, and as you can see his hands, you can see his foot, you can see his instruments, but it's all done in kind of that whimsical cubist style that Picasso made famous. I did the same thing with the bass, um, where I showed fingers, left hand, right hand, the fingerboard, and then of course the eyes. I didn't want the entire face, just the eyes, nose, mouth, maybe hair. Uh, Joel, who was the drummer, didn't have any hair, so I thought that'd be cool to put 
in a sphere. So, you know, half of a, sorry, Joel, but a styrofoam sphere so we could show his beautiful round pate. And we did the same thing with the strings because on the song Bro Coco, we had kind of this classical string group playing with the jazz group. And then I opted not to do it um, with me on the piano because I thought it'd be kind of fun later on in the video to have me make an appearance in the video along with these cubist shapes. So um, we had a very talented lady, and I'm sorry that I can't remember her name, but she put together these styrofoam balls, dowels, white poster board, assemble it all with uh, duct tape, and um, that's basically the set and what we did. Then we had to go into the studio and we had to film, but the filming was different because it was filmed in two segments. First of all, we filmed the musicians playing the song. We would film the, um, the drummer, Joel. We filmed him playing, again, just up close, maybe the hi-hat, maybe just his kick pedal, uh, snare hit, side stick on the snare. That's what we filmed so that we could show those cubist shapes. And um, then we went and filmed uh, the uh, guitar. Mike Dowdle played guitar, and we filmed him the same way. We had uh, Nicole Pinnell. She came in and did cello, had a lovely group of uh, string players, uh, three string players, two violins and one cello. We had, um, we had to film all of them with, uh, with the, the, just their face shapes so that we could create moving Picasso images. And so that was kind of fun and everybody got a kick out of it. You know, the last thing we did was we would film just expressions. So we'd say, look angry, look happy, look goofy, look to the side, look to this side, that side. And as you watch the video, you'll see how we use that. I got to give a uh, two shout outs. Number one, to the cinematographer, Kurt Wallen, who uh, had a yeoman's job because once we would project these images, it was his job to move around the images and from all different angles. So it was almost like a video in a video. So you can imagine these images being projected. They're just playing along. These, they don't move, but they, they, the face moves, the hands move, and so forth. But then it's his job to come up close. And rather than just zooming in with a zoom, he wanted it to make it a little more dynamic. So he would like run around. I remember one particular part of the uh, video that uh, you'll notice. And it's when um, uh, Kendra Lowe, uh, the violinist in the yellow dress is playing the solo. She played, she did, we filmed her actually playing a solo. We didn't, we didn't make it cubist. And then we projected her on the floor. And depending on his angle, as he would go around, she would distort, her image would distort because the camera was going around her. Um, I think you'll see that. Also, <clears throat> there was a section where they projected the keyboard, uh, piano onto the floor and then I would dance across it kind of Fred Astaire style and uh, he had to be right with it. Um, I would say that both he and I had to have perfect choreography because the images moved with the music and um, our, our, our editor who was really really amazing he was kind of the Picasso I think of the of the whole project Chris Florence did an, a masterful job the song starts and he had to create all the shapes, like here's where the violins are going to be, here's where the guitar is going to be, here's where the, the drums. And then um, I had to get to different places where I could turn the shapes and at the very time, at the very moment that the images showed up on the shape, I had to have it turned around. Uh, you'll see that when the string players come in. And then uh, Kurt had to know where the violins come in or where the guitar comes in so he could run over and shoot it. Anyway, it, I'm making it sound more <clears throat> complex than it was. Well, actually, it was complex, but I don't expect you to know it. It's not going to be on the test. In any case, um, I think the whole thing came together wonderfully. I was really, really happy with it. Um, John David, uh, who oversaw the whole thing, has, has a really creative mind. He works for a company called Metcom, and, um, or he's the owner. But he, uh, he does a masterful job on this even gave me a surprise ending, which you will see if you watch the video coming up next. This is Baroque Coco. And um, while I love the song, and maybe someday we'll talk about the actual song, today we're talking about the making of the video. That's how it was made. Now, watch the video and see it come alive. Thanks, everybody.